It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everyone! Okay guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Lane here with you. Also got my co-host with me, Carson as always. We are back. Yes sir, uh, I know this video is extra early, but uh, we got weekend plans. Gotta get this thing out. So, first fight. Uh, Cow, Cowie, Cow Fernandez versus Marta Casey. I'm gonna take Fernandez here. Um, you know, Mark does have good experience. He's in a lot of these just competitive fights, to say, because he's mostly not going for the kill, not trying to get knockouts. He's just kind of staying in fights. And uh, Fernandez, from what I've seen, looks good. You know, fights behind his kicks. He's got fast lead kicks and uh, tries to use a, a decent amount of pressure and has nice range control as well. Uh, this will be an interesting fight. It's going to play out close. We're going to take a Fernandez decision here. It just feels like Casey doesn't put it all out on the line. And where he does excel at times in the grappling is against bad grapplers. And it feels like Fernandez can uh, survive that grappling, at least from what I've seen, unless he gets a little too tired. We'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, Fernandez will be able to uh, stop those early takedown attempts from D. Casey and then uh, win on the feet. I think he'll be able to do a little more damage than D. Casey. And uh, D. Casey's a little, uh, um, I mean, he just doesn't do enough damage. I think uh, when he wins, I mean, it's it's just by control time uh, against bad grapplers. So um, in that fight against Michael Johnson, he was showboating the entire time when he was getting beat up. So um, hopefully he'll probably be doing that here as well, and uh, he'll probably lose. He does seem to have good durability, and I think that just comes with Again, not being too aggressive, not exposing yourself. You know, coming. I think he just comes from a Muay Thai background. So, again, interesting fight on the, how this one will play out. Uh, Fernandez's uh, one loss came from him starting real fast in round one, looking pretty good in the striking, grappled, got a little tired, and then his hands got real bad as the fight went on. But in round one, this guy does look dangerous. Um, and I, I think it's totally possible for uh, Fernandez to pull this one off. So, yeah, Fernandez by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Montserrat uh, Canejo Ruiz versus Eduarda uh, Mora. This is going to be a complete uh, destruction by Mora. Um, you know, grappling advantage, train with Jailton. Um, has, like... Yeah, you know, like dude shoulders and just is strong. And uh, if you look at Montserrat Ruiz, doesn't look like a natural straw weight, you know, kind of has an atom weight frame. And uh, we just saw what uh, Eduardo Mora did to a girl who was kind of also a straw weight or uh, atom weight, excuse me. So I'm going to go with knockout here for Eduardo Mora. We'll go round two. Feels like uh, Ruiz when she fought Amarim literally just covered up the entire fight trying not to get submitted and uh Amarim then just had to ground and pound her out after she realized she couldn't submit her because she was just gonna keep her arms in tight and uh, not let anything go yeah so I, I think you're not out here what do you think yeah I mean moore has got uh I mean there's a reason why she's minus 400 she's got a huge height advantage reach advantage ground game advantage and I think uh she's gonna destroy Ruiz I mean Ruiz has never been submitted before um so she was uh um she didn't tap in her last fight uh, but uh, I think Mora will be able to ground and pound her out um take her down and and rain some ground and pound Mora had pretty good control as well too so um I like her a lot here yeah and for a parlay style cards total setup in Brazil yeah throw her on your parlays that's my advice to you guys so Mora KO round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Angela Hill versus Denise Gomes. Going with uh, Denise Gomes. Angela Hill, you know, lengthy, somewhat lengthy. Feels like she's just skinny and long for her height. Um, and uh, doesn't really have that full damage game. Is high volume. Um, can get taken down, but also has okay grappling for herself offensively. Denise, though, the power and the uh, actual, like, kickboxing skill 
definitely lands on her side, and uh, I feel like Angela Hill, for not being finished uh, by knockout prior, this is probably a time where it's totally possible. So we're going to go Gomes knockout round two. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, Angela Hill just took so much damage in her previous fight against uh, Mackenzie Dern. Um, nearly finished in that one multiple times, too. So um, coming off of that fight, now she's getting this uh, power puncher who just sparked uh, Yasmin Auergy in 20 seconds with one punch. So um, I like the hometown chick here, 23 years old as well, against 38 got that going for her as well so i like gomes to uh, to be the first one to ko angela hill yeah uh, angela hill's gonna have to grapple i feel like in this fight and well you know she could i think what i've seen from gomes too though is that she likes to stand on the feet and uh she'll let like sometimes half of a round go by before she really starts to unload but apparently her confidence more recently just you know in that yasmin fight she's just more comfortable it seems like to to let people go, especially the girls that don't place their shots. She's definitely one of those who has placement on her punches. So, yeah, Angel Hill probably goes down here. KO round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Vitor Petrino versus Modestus Bukowskis uh, taking Victor Vitor here. Uh, this feels like... Um, he has more energy behind him, obviously a more power. And just from what I've seen, outsizing his opponents here at light heavyweight, just very big frame. The chin, he looks like he has a pretty decent chin. Um, Modestus, good movement, you know, decent footwork, decent boxing, but uh, for the most part, isn't particularly skilled anywhere. Uh, didn't pull away completely in that Zach Powder fight. Like, definitely won it, but didn't completely pull away um and i don't fully trust vitor petrino in this fight but we'll go with a knockout for him we'll go first round but very dodgy results from him uh to go to a decision with anton was very doofy considering tyson pedro just flatlined him and um a lot of holes in his game it looks like just from the practice fight Uh, what do you think yeah i mean uh petrino he's still he's still pretty young 26 years old um, I think he's getting a lot better, though, um, of late. Uh, I think, uh, and, yeah, like you you mentioned, the Petrino fight, he was um, able to take him down and pretty much control Petrino for, for most of that fight. You're mixing so, up your words here. You're talking about Pragnow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pragnow, yeah, yeah. Uh, Petrino was able to to uh, take down Pragnow and control that fight. Um but yeah, yeah, he got his first submission there, so he's obviously working on on that game as well too. So I think uh, um, if he has to resort to that, I think he he would be able to to do that here as well. Um, but I just think he's so powerful; um, he he might be able to get Bukakis out of here. Yeah, and just uses a lot of his strength too, just uh, holding down uh, Modestus uh, as a possibility here. The Pragnio, his takedown technique didn't even look that great, but just overpowered him. Um, right. The one and thing even I, in the Tricali tr- fight too, um, I mean his technique wasn't good at all, and he was able to get reversed quite a few times. But then he was able to reverse those positions, so he was able to get out of those bad positions too. So right, um, very weird, very weird fight. Yeah, I mean this one too. I Vitor as well just kind of he leaves his chin really high, um, which just allows those guys to get some of those nice punches on him. You know, his shoulders, his hands kind of sit more around between his chest and his hips, a lot lower. But that's also one of his tools. He's got a very good, a pretty good jab and a pretty good uh, left hook. And I think those did play to his advantage. But uh, again, facing good experience here in Modestus. So I'm curious how this one will play out. It'll probably be close. Um, the odds don't aren't really a good indicator, I think, for how this fight will play out. Uh, yeah, Petrino, KO, round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Zaleski Dos Santos versus Renat Fakradinov. Got to go with Renat here. Um, just looks like a force of nature. Looks like he's in his prime at the moment at 32 years old. Um, and, you know, Zaleski is good with the takedown defense, powerful striking, 
But um, the head movement and some things, uh, Renat just threw, he throws hard punches, man. Everything he does, it's forward moving with pressure. Um, everything's damaging. I mean, what he did to Brian Battle and uh, Michaelitis on the ground was just uh, a lot of damage. And I think damage should add up. And we could see a uh, second-round knockout here from Renat. I think this forward pressure, aggressive style favors him here, and he's going to pull this one out. Yeah, Renat is just uh, so relentless. Um, he's never, um, he's always pushing that pace on you, um, I, and I think he, he does that here as well. I mean, Zaleski Dos Santos has good takedown defense, but I just don't think it's good enough here. I think uh, Fakhradinov can... Um, even the threat of the takedown too could could help uh, Fakhradinov as well um, if they were to to strike a little bit too. So um, I like him a lot here. Yeah, I'm not totally sure with uh, the grappling how it's exactly going to play out. It feels like he should still be able to get uh, Dos Santos down because he is more of that big uh, big welterweight. Whereas when like Benoit Saint Denis was fighting, you know, he was smaller. Uh, Abu Bakar, not the best wrestler, even though for the last name, or even though he has that last name. But I think just even what he did to Kevin Lee, just forward pressure uh, in the punches when that comes, and his jab, he got a long ja- jab in that fight as well. Yeah, so. yeah, straight, straight punches, straight punches. Right. So again, another guy I like that I think you guys can add on to a long parlay on this card, and yeah, Fakhradinov KO round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Daniel Marcos versus uh, Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo just coming off the Contender Series Week 9, stepping in here versus Daniel Marcos. Tough matchup. We're going to go with Daniel Marcos here. Uh, I just like the style. Um, Obviously, I thought he did not win his uh, last fight versus David Grant. I think a lot of people could. What's that? Well, I did. You thought he did? Okay, well, I'm going to disagree with that. But. it just feels like Marcos, in my opinion, does so many of the technical things in MMA well. Uh, he's you know a good striker who tries to keep it on the feet, stays tall on the cage, defends the takedowns, doesn't get silly, good leg kicks, and always faces his opponent. I like all those things. Um, Victor Hugo, though, in my opinion, not a super impressive uh, contender series win. Um, he... You know, fish for a heel hook, didn't really come too close to it. Um, He had a good takedown, but for the most part, it looks like he was already slowing down in the first round where uh, uh, he he will need that cardio in a fight like this where he's going to try to probably take down Daniel Marcos a decent amount of it. And this guy just does a lot of big actions. He does spins, spinning kicks, uh, overhand punches, just going to burn out his energy against a guy who really just took down Simon Oliveira, who did the same type of shit. So, yeah, give me a Marcos decision. Yeah, um, I really like that Marcos works the body as well. Um, really uh, makes that a point in, in his fights to uh, uh, um, to to get the body. Um, he's got really good knees in the clinch as well. Um, like, he's me- like you mentioned, he has really good kicks as well too. So um, he's a good defensive grappler, and Hugo coming in, on short notice here. I mean, he just fought um, last month on the Contender Series, so that's a uh, one month and uh, um, back to back fights here for him. So, yeah, he um, didn't. I like Marcos here. He didn't seem to take too much damage, but there was just so many. There's a couple of things I just like noted down in that fight that were wrong, it, it, and one of the big ones was uh, his opponent kept on clinching and grappling with him when he was clearly the stronger guy, which just played to Hugo's advantage. And uh, as as well for Hugo, a guy who has quite a few heel hooks and just uh, leg submissions on his resume, those are a lot of those wins. I mean, I I want to say they don't count, but when you're heel hooking people who you know just aren't aren't equipped with the uh, defense for it, it, a lot of them are just easy wins. So um, I think Daniel Marcos is a whole other animal here, and I I will be looking at his line uh, into this week just uh for a time to probably bet it so yeah, yeah. did it come out i i'm not sure if it did come out yet. i i don't think i've one. seen it on uh whatever i've been looking at uh right now but i still i do feel like daniel marcos 
bad thing about this fight, Peruvian and Brazil, they're definitely not going to give him any support. I mean, they're going to be all on Victor Hugo, but... Yeah, um, if I remember correctly, um, Marcos uh, last or two fights ago was in uh, England, Brazil as well. Wasn't he in Simon England too Oliver. for the Davy Grant one? Yeah, I think that was in England as well too. Ah, well, yeah, he's doing well. I like his style, and uh, I think he wins this one. Okay, Marcos by decision. Okay, for the next fight we have Elvis Brenner versus Esteban Rebovic. I fucking love this fight. Um, I think this one's just going to be fireworks if it stays on the feet, we'll say. And I don't think it does. So I, I think Elvis Brenner takes this one to the ground. Um, Rebovic, you know, defended a lot of ground stuff in his last two fights. But I think Brenner brings a little bit better grappling to this fight than uh, even those two. You know, Redzabov, who is kind of a wrestler, still kind of gets tired from his grappling. And uh, it feels like Brenner just has a better submission base as well for this. And Rebovix, um, the initial takedown defense in rounds two and three versus uh, Camilla Kirk didn't look too bad. It looked pretty good. But uh, as for when he actually gets to his back, he can get stuck there for a little while. And we saw Elvis Brenner take down Garam like two to three times. Um, and I, I just think that uh, his speed, also his durability in the feet, just gives him a ton of options here. So I'm, I'm going to go with Elvis Brenner by submission. We'll go in the first round when they're dry, but uh, yeah, I, I think this is an interesting fight. Yeah, I love this fight. Um, yeah, and I mean, like you said, I mean, it's it's whether uh, Brenner um, will be able to get Rebovich down. I mean, um, in that first round in Rebovich's fight against Kirk, I mean, he, um, he got taken down and was on his back for the entire round. And then when he was able to uh, stop those takedowns in two and three, then he was able to, to pour it on Kirk and and win those last two rounds. So, I mean, I think it it really comes down to um, if Browner will be able to uh, take down Rebovitz here. But um, I think he will be able to, and I do like the submission. Um, Browner has, what, 11 submission wins right now, and eight of them are in round one. So um, oh, there I like you go. that path to victory. Something that annoys me a little bit about the betting game in general is just the blinders you can put on for certain fights. When I was just watching that Garam fight the first time I was watching I was so nervous because Garam was getting tagged up and I had a bet on him and obviously he ended up losing but watching it back it's just fucking crazy how uh you know Brenner did get rocked quite a few times and then the comeback victory the body shots um staying in his face and again these shoot box guys they're just so dangerous uh in what they do you know Esteban lighting up two guys who are also here in the UFC were primarily grappling in their fights, getting tired fast. Elvis Brenner could compete on the feet even after round one, I believe, whereas I think these other two guys are just, uh, they were kind of geared for one round of wrestling cardio. So, yeah. Give me Elvis Brenner. I love this matchup. Esteban has great hands, but I don't think it's his day. Brenner sub round one. Okay, for the next fight, we have Ishmael Bonfim versus Vince Pichel. It's uh, stacked in the favor of Ishmael Bonfim. Um, I do feel like his last performance, you know, it didn't go his way, but there's some bad factors going against him in that fight. Uh, I don't think as many of us realized how big Benoit Saint-Denis was at uh, lightweight until we actually saw those two face off, and then... Obviously, the repeated body kicks that uh, Saint Denis just threw against—it's almost similar to the Makhachev Volkanovski thing, where just the taller guys th- like smashing kicks on the smaller guys. So, I think this fights me different. I think about Bonfim with his uh, you know boxing background, defensively looking great, still a good grappler, better grappler than uh, uh, Vince here. It just feels like he's going to be a step ahead in this fight. And when you factor in age, uh, timing, speed, it feels like it all favors Bond theme. And again, that boxing background, we'll pick him by a knockout. I'm going to go round three, actually. I'm going to say there's going to be a, uh, ah, well, maybe I'll go round two. It seems like him and his brother both want to just start fast. Even in that Benoit Saint-Denis fight, he wanted to come out fast. So yeah, give me a Bond theme second round knockout. What do you think? Yeah, they, they come out blazing and they're in their hometown as well, or, uh, country so um 
it's pretty much stacked for them to win to win here. So, um, of Ismail Bonfin's losses, all four of his losses are by submission, and Vince Passell has zero wins by submission. So, um, I don't really see Pichel winning this fight at all here, um, especially at his age, at 40 years old now. Um, I think uh, this one's to get uh, Bonfin back on track here. So, um, what'd you say, round two KO? Yeah, I, this is another parlay fight. Just throw him in parlays, he'll win. Um, it's just also like uh, Pichel is just uh, he tries to fight like Dominic Cruz, and it doesn't work as well, especially at lightweight and then again factoring in age and uh i definitely did notice even in his uh hubbard fight like the lack of reaction timing which obviously can't really have in a fight like this so i don't know nope i don't got any more thoughts here do you no all right next okay for the next fight we have rodolfo Vieira versus armin petrosian um Initially, man, when I saw this matchup, I was like, Armin Petrosian should win this, but going back, watching some more film, you know, forgetting exactly how Petrosian's takedown defense looked, I'm going to go with Rodolfo Vieira here. Um, Let's also not forget that when he fought uh, Chris Curtis a little over a year ago, a lot of people had a lot of confidence in this guy to uh, go pretty far, and uh, even in that fight, he didn't perform as bad as what you know the stats might have said for takedown attempts and everything but uh, obviously we all know chris curtis's great takedown defense but what i was trying to get at is uh if you just watch petrosian's fights um he's been taken down in like almost every one of his fights besides i believe the christian leroy duncan fight so facing someone like kyle braulio braulo so uh getting taken down so easily in Every single time he shot a takedown on him, Petrosian's hips never got back, and instantly he was down to the mat. Now, he does do some good things well, uh, defending the submissions and working his way to the cage to get up, but a lot of times these guys that work their way back to the cage and try to get up, they give up their back, and you just can't give up your back, it seems like, to a guy like this. I'm going to go with a submission for Rodolfo Vieira. Um, it's definitely just that gra- grappler versus striker matchup like to a t so what do you think yeah ex- exactly i mean it, it just comes down to um if petrosian can stop those takedown attempts and if he can't if he's able to get back up to his feet in a reasonable amount of time um i don't think he will be i mean that Ky- kyle brawlo fight uh, really stands out uh, if his uh, takedown defense is not great at all i mean he did defend those submissions really well and that and made it a boring fight because he was able to do so um, but yeah, I just think uh, Vieira will be able to find those um, takedowns and and control Petrosian for for the more ju- majority of this fight until he finds a submission. Yeah, and a lot of the times Vieira's locking his hands under the butt for these takedowns, and he's not like you know grabbing onto a, a body lock. I just feel like Armin too. The the thing I, I'm not against anyone picking Armin in this fight, but I do feel like uh, if this one goes past. One round, Rodolfo Vieira, let's say a round and a half. Anything past a round and a half, Petrosian should be winning the fight from that point forward. But uh, the first round and a half will be probably Vieira putting him up against the fence uh, with a lot of pressure. So I think this one gets to the ground. I think Vieira submits him. So simple as that. All right. Okay, for the next fight, we have Kayo Baralo versus Abus Magomedov. Uh, we're going to go with Kayo here. Um, I think the mixture of grappling, striking, and cardio, all three, how you know, striking will be close, uh, but the other two will go his way. And uh, Abus, where everyone will probably trash him in the Strickland fight, he does, uh, you know, have very good lawn striking, uh, you know, a weird frame for the division, and uh, very fast. He is a guy who can come out very fast in round one, you know, and upset uh, a fight like this. But I think both guys will measure each other up pretty well. And uh, I also think Abus 
can survive a lot of the grappling here from Kayo. I see a lot of people p- picking submission here, but I, I actually like a decision in this fight, and the over might be a sneaky play in this one as well. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, if Kayo wins, which I do think he does, I do think it goes over that one and a half rounds. I think he'll be measured in that in that first round um, and just try to slow down Magomedov, get him a little gassed out, and then, uh, then wins rounds two and three. I do think... Uh, Oh well, well that uh, hype train on Magomedov really fell off of a cliff here after his last performance. We got a lot of Strickland. shit for picking Strickland. I remember <laughs> it was just yeah, funny. we did. And now, I mean, it's just weird to think about it. Um, like the odds in that one were were pretty much a pick 'em. Um, Magomedov a little little slight favorite, and now he's here like a huge underdog. It's just like um, the champ. It was. <laughs> I think I mean, Strickland you, was like minus one seventy, if I remember the number right. But but yeah, either I mean, way, it was like, still close. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of weird how that uh, happens. I mean, a year ago, you wouldn't have thought that, uh, you know, like Strickland would be champ and, and stuff like that. But anywho, uh, yeah, I think uh, Bralho. Um, one thing that I really did like against Bralho in in his last fight against uh, Olin Jacek is he was able to take a punch. I think his uh, durability showed, too. Um, Olin Jacek hit him a few times, and Olin Jacek's got pretty good power, too, and he ate him like it was nothing. So. He keeps his hands up well. He, like, he like stands really far out right of range, and then he kind of has, like, a darting, like, lead hook that he uses and right. a couple tools that he really likes. Um, something that Carson just said off mic before we started this breakdown uh was that in hindsight, everyone kind of, you know, shit on Magomedov for the way he lost against Strickland, but from the sound, the way Strickland fights and kind of what everyone saw just against Adesanya, it's kind of how Strickland fucked people up. So I thought that was a really good point. And uh, that's a, a reason for a lot of people to write Magomedov off in this fight. I really don't like the number for Barallo. I don't. I don't plan on parlaying him at all. Like I said, maybe looking at the over in this fight. Um, yeah, I mean, Abus is Abus is dangerous. Um, he can spark anybody, but um, I mean, I mean, I just don't think uh, um, that line is. Uh, um, I just think it's too wide. Yeah. Right. Good matchup here, though. We'll go Barallo by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Rodrigo Nashmento versus Dante Mays, the rematch that everyone's been waiting for. You know, Carson's been my ear all week. He's been saying, we got to pick Dante Mays. We got to pick Dante Mays. We're not picking Dante Mays. Uh, we're going with Rodrigo Nashmento. If you guys know this channel, it is our uh, it is our job here to trash Dante Mays' uh, MMA ability. And, uh, Nashmento will win this one again. I think it happens by decision. This will be a slop fest, although Nashmento does a good job of still facing his opponent. I just will never... I'll, dude, I'll never get over the fact of the uh, comedy show him and Hamdy uh, put on for us. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that might have been fight of the year in 2022. Oh, um, my God. I mean, for how many yeah. laughs I had, oh, my God, it was fight of the year. Yeah, I mean, I just... Yeah, this one's a slop fest as well. Um, I just think uh, this is to get Nascimento back on track, too. I mean, I think he wins this fight. Uh, I mean, his last two fights were both split decisions against Lear Latifi and Tanner Bowser. I think uh, this one's a little more clear um, and gets him back on track here. Right. Dante will just, uh, like, just like it. He tries to fight like Adesanya, but oh man, I wrote a note down here. Let me scroll. I said one of my notes I put down, and this is without even watching film because I know this guy too well. He moves like a drunk uncle playing backyard football. That's how. That's how I think the Dante Mays' uh, skills are. And uh, the thing I appreciate about Nash Mento is he'll at least still try to face his opponent. And uh, he, if you guys saw the first fight, better on the clinch. Um, and better at getting the fight to the ground. So, yeah, feels like a Nash Mento for an easy win here. Any more thoughts? 
Yeah, just grappling advantage, clinch advantage. I mean, Maze and Sakai, that fight, I think uh, Sakai just held him against the cage for for 14 of the 15 oh, minutes in that right. fight. So That was easy money at that fight. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, Maze will be able to to get off uh, off the cage or off of his back. So Right. I like Nashmento. Okay, Nashmento decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Gabriel Bonfim versus Nicholas Dalby. Easy, easy money, easy win on uh, Gabriel Bonfim here. It just feels like Nicholas Dalby has never been special here in the UFC. You know, he does, I know that record looks pretty decent, but he just fights that karate type style and jumps into range, breathes really weird the whole fight, and uh, nothing stands out about his game. And, uh, you know, a bit of a decision machine as well, especially at this age. And uh, Bonfim, you know, I always thought, you know, I always thought he was good. But what he did to Trevin Giles, how easily he took him down, how easily he took care of business in that fight, just tells you, like, how easily this guy can take the fight to the ground against Dalby. We saw Claudio Silva uh, take down Dalby at his age. I think Gabriel Bonfim will run right through him if he wants to. He's just got to be smart about this fight. Um, He could easily knock him out, too, because his boxing is phenomenal as well. So, yeah, give me Bonfim by sub. I think this is a good uh, step up for Bonfim. Um, I mean... I think Giles is better than Dalby, in my opinion. mm -hmm. I I definitely think so. But... uh, I think Dalby's decent um, Age-wise, I guess, there's a... Yeah, I mean, Asterix on he's Dolby. all right. Dolby is decent everywhere, but I mean, he, nothing really stands out about him. Um, uh, he was, I mean, he's never been technically no no uh, um, finished losses on his record, but but that no contest, like you mentioned against Jesse Ronson, um, he did get submitted early in that fight. So um, Bonfin will probably probably be able to do that, but if he's not, I mean, I'd be interested to see. Uh, how Bonfim's cardio holds up. I mean, most of his wins are in round one, and Dalby's a deci- decision ma- machine, so he's got decent cardio, so if it gets out of round one, it could be interesting, but I uh, don't think it does. Yeah, I'm curious at what point Bonfim matches up with someone, too, who would really give him some struggle, because, like, right now it looks like he's just going to kind of tear his way through until I don't know who he hits, so... It'd be interesting where they go from here, but again, we're on a Brazil card. They want this guy to win, and you got to parlay these guys up. And uh, yes, I'm putting Gabriel Bonfim in quite a few parlays, so uh, I would uh, I would do that if I were you guys as well, aren't you, Carson? Uh, absolutely, and that line has been destroyed as we speak. I think I think it's still playable, in my opinion, even at five hundred. Well, yeah, last week, I mean, before the uh, other fights, I think it was minus 350. I think that's what I got him at. And now it's up to 500. So it's climbing up there. Yep. All right. Bond team sub round one. Okay, guys. Welcome to the main event prediction. I'm sure you guys know what's already going to happen here. But please, guys, drop a like. As always, subscribe. Comment down below if you want. And, uh, yep, Jailton Almeida versus Derek Lewis. They had to do it. Uh, Jailton's going to, you know, win this one. Uh, you know, I've been saying it for a while, but Derek's been around for a paycheck. And uh, we got the fight right for the Delima one two two months ago, whatever, three months ago, when he uh, fought. Delima got that fly knee knockout. But. Yeah, you said it right away. You said as soon as that fight starts, Derek Luce is going to run across the cage and do a fly knee. You said that right before it happened. Sure. Yep. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, if you just have seen the Sergi Spivak fight, you know, other matchups, it just feels like Derek's not at this point anymore. And Jailton is going to get to his legs instantly, and it, the fight's going to be over. And I'm not even kidding you guys. I might put a five unit play on Jailton by finish. And I, I know that number is going to be like minus 400 given. But. Or, or another way way to play this is uh, Jailton by finishing rounds one or two, because um, I don't think it'll make it to a round three. <clears throat> and I just feel like uh, 
Almeida's going to be all over him. And uh, as soon as this fight starts, it should be about over. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope that number's pretty good. Again, I might put five units on Jailton by finish. It doesn't... I don't feel the risk for the Black Beast uppercut knockout like what happened to Curtis Blades. I think Jailton's faster than uh, what Derek can anticipate here. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, at minus 450, I mean, it's kind of hard. Uh, I mean, it's a parlay piece, but I just want to bring that number down. All of Almeida's wins are in round one or two, so... If you do in round one or two, um, probably get that number down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, Almeida's probably gonna. What do you like, KO or submission here? I picked submission because I think Derek Lewis is more likely to just give up a spot. Like the arm triangle versus Spivak, he just didn't even give resistance to. It was just like, yep, I'd rather have this happen. And uh, yeah. you know the. The uh, knockout is totally possible, but, you know, me and another friend, what we both know, I've talked about this many times, um, why do they keep on putting heavyweights? I know they're trying to promote Jilton Almeida, but a heavyweight main event is so unnecessary because, especially in this instance, we know it's going to last five minutes or less, probably. So, like, why even put on a, a five-round fight when you could get, like, you know, two really good uh, or a really good Brazilian like lightweight that could really go off. So I don't know. It it always just like boggles my mind, but I know they're trying to promote a fighter, but we know it's going to end in a really short time. Yeah, I mean, this will be Almeida's, uh, what, second consecutive uh, main event. So good for him. They're trying to promote him. I think uh, he passes this test as well. And I'll be interested to see who they uh, pair him up next with. Hey, but Derek Lewis ain't in Texas. He ain't in Texas. Uh, yeah. It's, Isn't it's the Apex kind of where he does a specialty where he had his little role? Yeah, and then uh, Spivak, I think, was the first one to beat him in uh, in the Apex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we ain't in Texas. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if Derek pulls his pants off after he gets uh, choked out. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, but... Uh, he's getting paid. He's getting compensated. It's similar to, you know, Kamaru Usman getting compensated most recently. So, yeah. Any more thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, uh, it is short notice for him, but, I mean, it's not like that short of notice. What did he have, like a month or two maybe? Um. Yeah, I think that part of the problem is that no heavyweights want to take this fight, and Derek's probably just like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care, care, man. Yeah, yeah they just pay me well. He's, he's just happy the Texans are winning. Yeah. All right. There you go. Almeida submission round one. Okay, guys, so recap U- UFC 294 bets. Uh, here we are, minus 1.06 units. Um, Not the best plays, and hey, I'll, I'll shame myself on uh, one or two of those. But starting it off, uh, Said Nurmagomedov, I told you guys all week that this was going to be the easiest win, and... Uh, it was, and uh, I wanted to play the finish on this, but I felt like I already had enough on it. I should have. It was plus 150. Talk about easy money. Um, and I, was our pred- I mean, Carson, our prediction, wasn't this spot on yeah. on exactly yeah, what happened? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it was dead serious. We thought that Gaff- I said that Gafarov just grapples, even though he has no advan- like advantage in the grappling, and then he just went and got himself fucking killed. So Yeah, throws his neck out there for you to snatch up, and um, Nurmagomedov's one of the best at getting that guillotine. And um, Gafarov's never been finished before, so, I mean, I think a lot of people saw, saw the over in that play, but... Uh, I had some long parlays with uh, the under in that one, which helped out. So I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, And then Uh, he's got a nasty guillotine. Right. Nasty. You you had Alistairov and uh, fuck. Uh, You had Basharat with him. And then, uh, of course, the Basharat fight got canceled due to uh, exploding testicles. So Alistairov just destroyed Alves. And that was pretty easy money there. Yeah, I mean, to the Basharat fight. I mean, it. I mean, if who was winning, I couldn't tell. Basharat won the first round for sure. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't really get that. It's like, I mean, Bashrat won round one. And then, I mean, it, like if Wood, he's got hit in the wiener twice. Does If he just says, I can't go anymore, does is that fight just a no contest then? I mean, I guess. I mean, he was losing. He lost the first round. What Does he just say, oh, I can't continue it, and then it's a no contest? So, that, I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm still, just, like, kind of confused, even with the controversy, like, there's not a great camera angle, I'll say, that shows the nut shot, but I know the Basharat brothers were pissed, and they said it wasn't a nut shot, but I also understand that even a shot that's close to the nuts could, like, influence the cup, which could, like, fuck up your balls, so. <laughs> In all those science terms that just came out of my mouth. Um, but yeah, I, I, that was weird. Um, follow, yeah, following that up, I had Nathaniel Wood. I just thought it was a screwy fight. Like, I thought Wood, man, I said this, he just needs to put on a little weight. Like, Naimov didn't even look that great, but he gets dropped. Wood gets dropped right away in the first round because of his size. And then he gets laid on uh, because he's too small. Comes back at the end of the first round, hurts Naimov, and then, like, re engages with grappling where he's the smaller guy. And then he got put on his back again, but. That was just the main issue, man. Other than that, he's definitely the better fighter, and that one upset me a little bit. That would have that would have turned our night positive, uh, given that. Yeah, I mean, if they take a point away, um, that's probably a a draw, right? Or if uh, Wood just says I can't continue like Victor Henry did, then it's a no contest, right? So right, that was the first time I, I felt like Wood didn't use great fight IQ either with like keeping range and not grappling, but. Uh, prop and th- Imov was grabbing his um, gloves at the end of that round, round right. three, when he was nearly getting finished. So screw that guy. Uh, picked Hamzat by KO. Uh, you know, hand injury possibly happened in that fight. I don't think there's anything official that's ever came out about that. But he did just hold on to Kamaru. I kind of thought it'd be a little bit more stand up, less wrestling. Uh, and Hamzat sticks to his normal ways. You know, a lot of people trashed Hamzat for that win, but let's not forget he beat a guy that was like pound for pound number, you know, number one like a year and a half ago. So it's 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 pretty impressive still to me that um, Hamzat could just completely out grapple. I know it's short notice. I know all this shit. Still impressive. Um, it's also a different game plan, probably um, different little diff- little different style than what Paulo Costa brings. Also, like. You could see that you could probably say that Hamzat's style for that fight might have adjusted on the fact that Kamara's on short notice. Like he might have just been like, "Well, fuck, we're gonna wrestle" because he probably hasn't been preparing for that. So, yeah. Um, then I bet on Dumas. We'll just fucking say that was the stupidest bet ever. And I kind of prefaced that with with placing it, but uh, yeah, Dumas sucks. Um, and then I did Bruno Silva KO round one because it was the only way to win. And uh, the grappling kind of got shitty in that fight. And Charbutin has a lot to work on. Um, I mean, in the first round, Silva did crack him a few times. I mean, Magomedov did show he's got somewhat of a chin there. Right. But, yeah, I, I thought that was that was a good first round. I Second I, and third kind of got. I feel know. so conflicted with the Islam Volk fight. Like, I'm not taking anything away from Makashev, but I feel like I do make excuses for Volk, like, just for that fight, how how uh, things turned out. I feel like he was at such just a disadvantage size-wise, and then um, he should have switched southpaw Volk but uh, <clears throat> with those kicks, but he kind of stayed in the danger zone. And uh, Islam is phenomenal. I'm not saying he's not. He's absolutely phenomenal. So, uh Magomed, uh, Magomed and Goliath, Johnny Walker, what a fucking shit show. Honestly, just not a very good card. I mean, other than, like, the last fight, the last knockout, there wasn't too many great things in this card, so. Yeah, the prelims were pretty lackadaisical. Um, like, the Jubilee um, fight was somewhat interesting, but those guys are so low level that it's like, who even fucking cares? Like yeah, him and Breeden. I mean, Jubilee, what was he? He was like minus a thousand live odds, and he couldn't survive. Like, Yeah, he just couldn't protect his chin. And uh, Jinyu Fry, like, 
she had she but due to Kova's not that good either. I don't know. Not a great card, but hopefully uh, things go better here with the uh, UFC 295. Even though John Jones got hurt, but we'll see. Yeah, I think this uh, heavyweight fight's uh, better than what they had. So. Oh, I I agree. I just wish it was for the real belt. But yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, uh, bets video will come out Thursday, a week from now. So just stay tuned. All right. Peace. <laughs>